You may ask why do we need another set of guidelines when talking about low and middle income countries and the reality is that although we have different guidelines dealing with breast cancer treatment and I can name the uh, ESMO guidelines, the recommendation from the NCCN or the San Gallen consensus meeting, uh, the problem with those is that in fact because of lack of parameters those guidelines cannot be used in an environment where you lack a lot of information such as for instance receptor status or HER2 status and that's, that is why those recommendations although very well developed are not directly applicable in a low resource environment and we need to find solutions adapted to the local situation to find to give recommendations that are applicable in those settings. The problem of breast cancer is um, a global problem. It's the most frequent uh, cancer cause for death in women. Yet there are countries in which, because of lack of resources, uh, interventions for breast cancer are not readily available. And in those countries, breast cancer treatment and cancer, for that, for that matter, uh, concur, uh, are, is in competition with other more important causes of mortality. And we have to acknowledge that and to understand that in certain settings it is not feasible to talk about breast cancer treatment before uh, addressing other more important issues. But once you reach the level at which um, you um, have certain basic interventions that are considered the minimum that needs to be done for breast cancer, from there you can start building up a strategy towards optimized uh, breast cancer care. As we all know, advanced disease is a feature for many, many patients at presentation in low and middle income countries. And that is a huge problem because that's very resource intensive and the results are obviously uh, poorer than when you have more localized disease. And um, there is no um, general solution to that. Actually, we have realized there's an important heterogeneity in the way um, the system, the health system is um, armed to fight against breast cancer and there's also different scenarios um, and the treatment that the woman will receive for her for tumor in low and middle income countries will, will very much vary depending on what is available and you might have certain systems in which you have uh, interventions such as systemic chemotherapy such as radiation therapy and some you don't and really the challenge is to try to make the optimum of what is available and to build a strategy to improve care. I think there are unique advantages of using metronomic chemotherapy in this, especially in the setting of low and resource, uh, low and middle income countries. When you think of it, uh, standard intravenous chemotherapy requires a number of um, visits to the hospital requires a number of facilities you have to have facilities to give chemotherapy you have to have the proper uh, background in terms of uh, antiemetics in terms of supportive systems for um, uh, blood banks and other things like that whereas metronomic chemotherapy being less toxic requires less expense in terms of medical equipment also it requires less expense because the medication is cheaper usually metronomic chemotherapy uses old drugs that are extremely cheap at the time at this time and so um, and it, it and it's particularly appealing in settings where for instance distance and traveling to the center for delivering breast uh, cancer treatment is 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 large so for a woman that lives far from the hospital, it will be very helpful to maybe go once to the hospital, be seen, have uh, a treatment prescribed, and then the treatment can be monitored somewhere else in, in the area, by, uh, even by a housewife or um, general practitioner. I'm not saying this is the best way of doing it, but I'm saying that we have to find solution for those women not being able to come to the hospital. The Breast Health Global Initiative um, is an initiative to, like I said, to develop uh, recommendations for breast cancer treatment in countries with limited resources. And although we tried to have a um, broad approach and to propose a stepwise incremental process to access to care, 
so that to, to start from the basic level and once you can achieve uh, the fact that you will be able to offer your patients the alternatives needed at the basic level, then you can go up to the um, limited and then enhance in order to achieve optimal care. But this process is complicated and uh, it has been instrumental for us to develop certain pilot projects uh, such as in, in Ghana or in um, Indonesia and other uh, parts of the world in Latin America where we really try to see how our guidelines can be implemented into practice. Because a guideline that's just a published article in a nice journal doesn't change the life of, of, of people. So we really wanted to, and had this desire to implement the guidelines. And so far we have been extremely rewarded by what we have seen in, in practice in Ghana and in other countries in terms of making the difference for the patients. The funding for the, the, the initiative comes uh, from, from charity. Uh, the pilot projects that we have developed in Ghana and in other countries are locally uh, sponsored or through the means of international organizations that have a desire to help people in, in those areas. I believe it's not extremely complicated to uh, get money for this, this kind of issues. Um, once you have a good idea and once you prove that you, what you're trying to do is to improve the outcome of breast cancer patients globally.